Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna take a look at a self-hosted dashboard called Jump. But first, a quick message from today's video sponsor. This episode is sponsored by Linode, the largest independent cloud computing provider. If you don't want to, or can't for whatever reason, self-host applications the way we talk about on this channel, Linode provides virtual servers that make it easy and affordable for you to host anything in the cloud. You can set up any of the applications that they have available in their marketplace with just a few clicks, or you can set up your own Docker VPS and install basically whatever you'd like in a Docker container. They have load balancers and firewalls available to help keep your apps online and safe. If you run into any trouble getting set up, Linode comes with amazing 24 seven customer support by phone or ticket, along with hundreds of guides and tutorials to help you get started. Sign up today at linode.com slash dbtech and get a $100 60 day credit on your new Linode account. Links are in the description. So we've taken a look at several dashboards over the course of the time that I've been running this channel and talking about self-hosting and that sort of thing. And uh, there's a lot of different dashboards out there. This is another one that I found that I like for kind of a different reason than I thought I would. And in this video, I kind of want to show you around Jump, show you how to get it set up and administered and that sort of thing. So let's jump over to my desktop and take a look at Jump. So here is the Dale Davies jump repository over on GitHub. And basically you can see that it's the very first folder up here is Docker. And of course there's a bunch of stuff in here you can read. You can take a look at the Docker file uh, up here on the top right hand, right hand corner. It says jump is yet another self-hosted start page for your server designed to be simple, stylish, fast, and secure. And the secure thing is kind of what intrigued me about this. Uh, we've taken a look at other dashboards in the past where you could, you know, kind of build all of your stuff on, on the GUI, like on the actual web page itself uh, and kind of build up your links and that sort of thing. With Jump, you actually do things in JSON files and uh, JSON files used to bother me a little bit, but from a security standpoint, I get it. Uh, you know, if they can't have access to your JSON files, they can't mess with your dashboard. So kind of a, a little a little extra level of having to really get in there if they really wanted to mess with your start page, if somebody really wanted to do that. Uh, if we scroll down here a little bit, there's a little demo video. Uh, we're not gonna worry too much about that. Uh, there is a, a demo down here that we're not going to look at either because I've already got one set up, but we'll get to that too. Uh, down here, we do have a Docker Compose. I love that this is pre-built. Uh, oftentimes, you'll just get little chunks and bits and pieces, and I like that this one is fully built out. Uh, and of course, in here, we've got a version three. Uh, our services, uh, is just a single service called web. Our image is Dale Davies slash jump. Our port is 8123, uh, ported over to 8080. Uh, we've got four different mapped volumes uh, for backgrounds, fav icons, search, and sites. That will make sense here in a moment when we actually get into kind of the nitty, nitty gritty of administering the site itself. Uh, below that, we've got an environment, or we've got environmental variables of site names. So what do you want to show up in the tab uh, in your browser? Uh, we've got an OWM API key that is for uh, for the weather widget that's on here. And then we've also got latitude and longitude uh, as an environmental variable. So you can get the, the, the correct weather for your specific area. So below that, there are several more environmental variables that you can use. Uh, I actually had to modify mine just a little bit as I wasn't getting uh, anything to display for some reason without some of them. Uh, so we'll take a look at what my Docker Compose looks like now. Uh, so we jump over here to Portainer, we'll jump into Stacks. We'll go in here to Jump and go to Editor. And here we can see that I've got, uh, you know, all of the same stuff as before. We've mapped the storage for fav icons, uh, background search and sites. Uh, make sure that those are uh, writable uh, by, by your user so that you can upload icons and make modifications to the JSON files and things like that. That's just one thing to keep in mind is those files will need to be writable. So that's something there. Uh, the site name you can change uh, to something other than Jump Dashboard. Uh, in fact, if we look right up here on the tab next to us or next to this tab, we can see that Jump Dashboard is what it's labeled as. Uh, we've got an API key again for weather. Uh, we've got my latitude and longitude of where I am in just Colorado Springs in general. Uh, we've got show clock, um, the AM PM clock, both of those are set to true. Uh, show greeting is set to false. Um, you could set that to true and then uh, instead of just getting that little hashtag for the grouping of these icons, it would actually say like good morning, good afternoon, good evening, that sort of thing. Uh, metric temperature, I, I've got set to false uh, because I use Fahrenheit here in America. And then we want to do a cache bypass. I've got that set to true uh, just for testing purposes. But this is uh, what I had to do to get all of my icons to show up appropriately. I actually had to open a ticket on this and then I got it figured out sort of 
But anyway, this is the Docker Compose that I used. Uh, of course, all of this will be linked in the description down below if you want to check that out. Once you've got this thing deployed, uh, you know, once you've got all this set up, you can just scroll down, click on Deploy the Stack in Portainer. Of course, if you're doing this in command line, uh, you know, you would uh, just do a Docker Compose up or d dash D up uh, for the detached. But uh, then here in just a, a couple of moments, when this, once this is downloaded, in fact, let's take a look at our image over here uh, for Jump. Uh, let's see. Uh, Dale Davies jump is 54.4 megs. That's pretty cool. You can see some of these others, uh, you know, couch DB, file run, uh, store down. We're going to talk about store down in another video. A lot of these are hundreds of megs or even gigs for these images, but uh, Dale Davies has got this to 54 megs. So well done on that. So basically here is uh, my homepage. Uh, we can see that listed as hashtag home right there. Uh, if we take a look over here at the top left, we've got search. Uh, we can click on that and we've actually got different options uh, for search engines uh, available to us in our uh, in one of our JSON files that we will take a look at. Uh, of course, I can just do, you know, DB uh, tech. And here we can see that you know, we've got Google, DuckDuckGo and Bing, uh, as well as sites. It actually pulled this in from the search results. So I love that that is there as well. Um, up here in the top right, we've actually got uh, the option for different tags. Uh, so, you know, if we wanted to, we were on home right now, but if I wanted to look at stuff, uh, we can click that. It'll bring us over here and uh, we can take a look at what's in the stuff category. And of course, over here, we've got things. Uh, and again, we've got uh, more of the, basically the same stuff recategorized or put in multiple categories, I guess is a better way to put that. Uh, bottom left, uh, we've got uh, our location where we're where we're currently located based on the latitude and longitude that was applied in our uh, in our Docker Compose and our stack over there in Portainer. In the bottom right hand corner, we've got the time and the weather. Of course, that is in Fahrenheit. I could have set that to, uh, you know, metric temp. Yes, or whatever that variable is. And that would come up as Celsius. Also, if I click this, it will pop this open and kind of show us what's going on here. Uh, for some reason, though, it is doing it in Celsius. I don't know if that's where, where the where the glitch is there, but just something to keep in mind as far as that's concerned. So that that is basically how this works. You know, of course, you can just you can come in here and and switch between your different categories or tags, whatever you want to call them. Uh, so let's take a look at uh, let's let's bring this down. I'll bring this. OK, so uh, right here, let's min, uh, let's leave that. So here is uh, basically where I've got everything mapped for my Docker container. Again, our backgrounds, our fav icons, search and sites. Uh, backgrounds. These are all of the different backgrounds that will just load randomly uh, as a wallpaper for our uh, for our Docker container here in the browser. Um, we've also got fave icons or just the one icon rather, which is just going to be this little house right there. If I open this up, um, maybe there it is. There's our house. Uh, so that's what we're seeing up here. Of course, you could change that to basically whatever you want. Just uh, replace this with I another icon.png. Should be good to go there. For our search, here's a search engines.json file. We're going to go ahead. I've actually got this open in another tab over here. Um, and here we can see that this is, you know, Google, DuckDuckGo, and uh, Bing. Uh, originally, this was uh, .co.uk, uh, like so. Uh, what I want to do here is just kind of show how this works uh, right here in the, uh, this is the source code for our dashboard here. And uh, right here, just right there, just that quickly, it changed to co.uk. Uh, let's actually change that back just so we can kind of see this again. Uh, we'll do that and click save. Uh, we'll come back over here and refresh. And now it just that quickly, it switched back to .com. Didn't have to restart the, the, the Docker container or anything. Just loaded it in real time just that quickly. And I absolutely love that. Of course, you can do the same thing, you know, with the other search engines that are available in there. So uh, that's what the search engines.json file is uh, that we just looked at there. The other thing we want to take a look at is our sites file so that we can kind of understand how these uh, these images and these these tags, these categories are placed. Uh, so basically, we've got this uh, sites.json file right here uh, under the sites uh, folder. We've got icons in there. Here we've got Bitwarden, dbtag, getea or get he, uh, my default icon, next cloud, paperless, pile, trillium, all of those. Some of those I put in there, some of them were already there. Uh, and if we take a look at the sites.json file, uh, we've got um, just some default information for no follow equals true, the default icon, uh, new tab equals true. Um, and then below that are each of the individual icons uh, that we're going to see on here. The first one, in fact, let's go back to home uh, just so we can kind of uh, take a look at these side by side a little bit. Let's do this. Let's do 
literally side by side here. So GitHub uh, is the very first one up here. Uh, it's got the URL, it's got a description, it's got a nofollow of true and a new tab of true. Um, and it just kind of pulled the default icon in there uh, for that. Next, we've got Docker Hub uh, with a link over to the Dale, J Dale Davies Jump repository there. Uh, we've got, um, uh, below that, we've got Bitwarden. And we'll notice the first two aren't categorized. There's no tags below that. However, uh, below that, we've got Bitwarden, uh, all of the same name, URL, description, icon, whatever. Then we've got tags of stuff. And we'll notice that Bitwarden isn't on home, but if we come over here and go to stuff, uh, Bitwarden is right there. Uh, same thing if we get into like, uh, we can, we've got uh, Git here or uh, Git EA, whatever. Uh, again, labeled under stuff. Uh, I could if I wanted to, again, in real time, um, we'll just call this wow and click save. Uh, then I'll just refresh the page. And now we've got wow up here. If I click that, there is that get EA or get T. I don't know how that's actually supposed to be pronounced, but you kind of get the idea of how this is gonna get categorized. Um, you can actually take it a step further. Uh, you can actually have uh, spaces in your naming conventions. Um, so if, let me let me save this. We'll go back to home. And then right here is wow stuff again. And there that is. Uh, below that, we've got next cloud for home and things. So again, if I come over here to home, uh, there is next cloud. And if I come over here to uh, things, uh, there is next cloud as well. So you kind of get the idea of how these things work. Um, and you can, you know, put in uh, all kinds of different uh, options for a no follow, new tab, uh, those sorts of things. Very, very easy to configure and categorize things based on the categories that you want uh, your different uh, applications to be in. I uh, absolutely love how, how simple this is to use. And again, because uh, none of this configuration is possible without server access, I do believe it is just a little bit more secure than your average dashboard that you're allowed to kind of change things on the fly in the browser here. If you'd like to get early access to my content, you can head over to Patreon, become a channel member here on YouTube, or head over to dbtech.fans. And any of those ways will help support the channel and give you early access to ad-free content. So that's Jump. That's just, it's a quick video to just demonstrate this new dashboard that I found. Uh, absolutely love it. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. I'd love to know what your thoughts are on this Jump dashboard. But I think with all that said, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. I wanna thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me and I will talk to you in the next video.